What's up? Hope everyone's doing good. Today's Bible study is about Old Testament quotation. And so in the Bible, you have teachings which are considered milk, which are easy to understand. And you also have teachings which are considered meat, which is a little more uh, advanced in its teachings. So I wouldn't consider today milk, even though it's kind of easy, but I consider it for those who uh, have read before and kind of know uh, about the New Testament and the Old Testament. And so the teaching today is on the Old Testament quotations. And so when the New Testament quotes from the Old Testament, um, it doesn't apply to that entire chapter. It's only applying the, those verses being quoted from. And today I'm going to show three of those. Um, Hebrews chapter 10, Matthew chapter 2, and Matthew chapter 13 and for this video today. And so what we're going to see is that though the New Testament quotes from the Old Testament, um, for example, Hebrews chapter 10 quotes from Psalms chapter 40, but because Psalm, or Hebrews 10 quotes from Psalms 40 doesn't mean that all of Psalm 40 is about this. Um, it only means those verses quoted from are about this, and we're going to prove that. Stay with me. Hebrews chapter 10, verse 5 through 7. Wherefore, when he cometh into the world, this is reference to Jesus being born a baby with flesh and, and bones, living his life, eventually being that sacrifice which takes away sins and establishes the new covenant. Here, wherefore, when he cometh into the world, he saith, Sacrifice and offering thou wouldest not, but a body hast thou prepared for me. This is Jesus speaking to the Father, saying that God was not pleased with those animal sacrifices. Why? Hebrews chapter 10, verse 4. It's not possible that the blood of bulls and goats should take away sins. So a body was prepared for Jesus by the Father, and Jesus says in burnt offerings and sacrifices for sin, thou hast had no pleasure. The reason why is because they can't take away sins. So Jesus said this, Then said I, Jesus, lo, meaning behold, I come, in the volume of the book it is written of me, to do thy will, O God. This is a quotation found in Psalm chapter 40. And what we're going to see is this is a reference to Jesus being born a human to do the will of the Father, to offer up his body, his blood, as a sacrifice which would take away sins and establish the new covenant so that individuals who uh, place their faith in Christ and are baptized for the remission of their sins, they would receive the forgiveness of their sins. Their sins would be washed away, taken away. So this passage in Hebrews 10 is about Jesus coming to the earth, being clothed with that flesh and blood to offer up himself as a sacrifice for sins. Now, if we notice in Psalm 40, where does this quoted from look? We see that it's quoted from here. Sacrifice and offering thou didst not desire. Burnt offering and sin offering hast thou not required. Then said I, lo, I, I come, and the volume of the book it is written of me. Clearly, Hebrews chapter 10 is quoting from Psalm 40. But notice, in Hebrews 10, who is it speaking? Jesus. So therefore we assume, oh, well, in Psalm 40, who is this speaking? we would say Jesus. But just because this passage applies to Jesus doesn't mean that the entire chapter applies to Jesus. Um, especially Jesus coming to earth, living his life perfectly, and offering up his body for a sacrifice for sins. We're going to see that from verse 12. Look at this. If the entire chapter is about Jesus, look what it says. For innumerable evils have compassed me about mine iniquities have taken hold upon me. Jesus didn't have any iniquities. If Jesus had iniquities, then his offering up of his body and his blood through death wouldn't be the sacrifice that takes away sins. And so we read though in Psalm 40, verse six through eight, this applies to Jesus because it's quoted from in the New Testament. So we know this applies to Jesus coming to do the will of the Father. But also found in Psalm 40, verse 12, does this apply to Jesus? No. So it's just, this is my favorite example, but just how when the New Testament quotes from the Old Testament, it only is referenced to those verses which are quoted from and not the entire chapter. So just because Hebrews 10 says that Psalm 40, verse 6 through 8 applies to Jesus, doesn't mean that all of Psalm 40 applies to Jesus. We're going to see another example of this in Matthew chapter uh, 2, verse 13 through 15. 
And so in this instance, we're going to see a, a scripture from the Old Testament fulfilled by Jesus. And again, let's just go into it. Matthew chapter 2, verse 13 through 15. And when they were departed, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph in a dream, saying, Arise and take the young child and his mother and flee into Egypt. So here they were going to go into Egypt. Jesus is a child. Uh, Joseph and Mary, they were going to go into Egypt and be thou there until I bring thee word, for Herod will seek the young child to destroy him. When he arose, Joseph, he took the young child and his mother by night, and he departed into Egypt. So here, the Son of God is going into Egypt. And it says, And they were there until the death of Herod, that it might be fulfilled which was spoken of the Lord by the prophet, saying, Out of Egypt have I called my son. And so this song, or not this song, this uh, scripture is quoted from Hosea chapter 11. And what we're going to see is here, this is reference to Jesus. The, the son that was called out of Egypt has reference to Jesus uh, and them leaving Egypt at the death of Herod. But in Hosea 11, when this verse is used, out of Egypt have I called my son, has nothing to do with Jesus leaving Egypt upon the death of Herod. Um, and so that's just, this is going to show that when the New Testament quotes from the Old Testament, it's not saying that that entire chapter applies to that quote that's being used. Um, Hosea 11, look at this. When Israel was a child, then I loved him. Reference to uh, God seeing Israel in Egypt during their bondage. And it says, when Israel was a child, then I loved him and called my son out of Egypt. This is reference to God causing Israel to escape the Egyptian bondage that they were under. That's what it's used in the context here. And notice, we're going to see why it is that you can't say that this entire chapter has reference to Jesus leaving Egypt with his parents. Because we read in the New Testament, out of Egypt I called my son. In the New Testament it says Jesus fulfilled that passage. Um, because they left Egypt upon the death of Herod. But look, Hosea chapter 11, verse 2. As they called them, so they went from them, they sacrificed unto Balaam, and burned incense to graven images. When Jesus and his parents left Egypt, they didn't sacrifice to Balaam. They didn't burn incense to graven images. Israel, when they left Egyptian bondage, when they left Egypt, when Israel was a child and when Israel was called out of Egypt under the Old Testament, um, they sacrificed to Balaam. They burned incense to graven images. So, again, what we see the New Testament quotes from this, only this portion. It doesn't say when Israel was a child and I loved him and called my son out of Egypt. No, that's not what's being quoted. The only portion which is being quoted from is this last part where it says, I called my son out of Egypt. Jesus fulfilled that. And so when this is quoted from in the New Testament, it's not saying that the entire chapter of Hosea 11 has reference to Jesus coming out of Egypt, um, but only rather the, the scripture which is being quoted from. And so a lot of people run into trouble because when they see a quotation in the New Testament that's from the Old Testament, they assume that that entire chapter has to do with what's being quoted from which is false otherwise if this if matthew 2 quotes from hosea 11 and says that this is about jesus and so if the whole chapter has to do with this is about jesus being called out of egypt look what happened when he got called out of egypt they sacrificed to balaam they burned incense to graven images jesus never did that mary and joseph never did that this passage wasn't fulfilled by Jesus and his parents, but what was? What, what passage did it say would be fulfilled by Jesus? Only this, only this part, you see it, called my son out of Egypt. That's the only portion which is being quoted from, uh, which would be fulfilled when Jesus was called out of Egypt. And so I'll show that again, because here it says that he was called out of Egypt and then they sacrificed to idols. But in the New Testament, what it said, uh, that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken out of the Lord by the prophet, saying, look, this is the only verse quoted from, not the entire chapter, only this portion. Out of Egypt I called my son. 
And so just because this quotes from Hosea 11, we can't say that all of Hosea 11 uh, has to do with Jesus being called out of Egypt and living his life on earth. And the last one, this is uh, this is a really good one, too. Again, there's so many passages, so many Old Testament quotations found in the New Testament that prove this point that the entire chapter is not being referred to, but only that portion which is being quoted from. Matthew chapter 13, verse 34 and 35. Look at this. This one's this one's a good one. All these things Jesus spake to the multitude in parables, and without a parable spake he not unto them. This is reference to Jesus speaking to the Jews. He spoke to them in parables, but look at this. That it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by the prophet. Okay, look, here's the Old Testament quote saying, I will open my mouth in parables. I will utter things which have been kept secret from the foundation of the world. So here, Jesus is going to be telling them things which have been secret, which no man has heard since the foundation of the world. So these are not teachings which they already knew. These are teachings which have been kept secret since the foundation of the world that he would reveal to them. And notice this, this psalm, which is quoted from Psalm 78, look at this. I will open my mouth in a parable. I will utter dark sayings of old. That's what Jesus quoted from. Jesus quoted said, I'm going to utter my, uh, I'm going to utter sayings, which have been kept secret since the foundation of the world. And Jesus used it as in nobody has ever heard them before. Jesus would reveal it. But look at this. In Psalm 82, where it's being quoted from, it says, these dark sayings of old in Psalm 82, it says, which we have heard and known, and our fathers have told us. And so this is a perfect example. Jesus quotes Psalm 82, verse 2, to say, I'm going to be speaking things which have never been heard before. But when you look in the psalm itself, when it's used in this context, it's saying these dark sayings of old have been heard and known and they've been told by their fathers before them. And so this again goes to show that when the New Testament quotes from the Old Testament, it doesn't apply to the whole chapter, but it applies to only that verse which is being quoted from. Because in this, in Psalm 82, when this verse is used, when the psalmist um, opens his mouth to utter dark sayings of old, it says they knew those things. Their fathers told them those things. Those are things which they have already heard, which have been told time and time again to generation after generation after generation. But when Jesus quotes Psalm 82, verse 2, Jesus says he's going to utter things which have been kept secret from the foundation of the world, meaning uh, that nobody has ever heard those sayings before. He would reveal them, they'd be new. And so that again is just, I keep saying it time and time again, but when the New Testament quotes from the Old Testament, it doesn't apply to the entire chapter. It only applies to those verses being quoted from. And this is a prime example, because Psalm 78 verse two, or verse two and three, these things which were uttered in parables were known. Jesus, when he uttered his parables, were things which were not known, which have been kept secret since the foundation of the world, which he revealed. And so that's three verses for today. Matthew chapter 2, verse 13 through 15, about God calling uh, Jesus out of Egypt. Hebrews chapter 10, verse 5 through 7, about God preparing a body for Jesus so he could offer his body and his blood as a sacrifice to take away sins and establish the new covenant. Matthew chapter 13, verse 34 and 35, Jesus uttering sayings from old time since the foundation of the world, which have never been uh, used before, never been taught before, never said before. And so if you have any questions about this, I'm going to make some more videos on it, but this should be sufficient enough for now just to prove that when the New Testament quotes from the Old Testament, again, my favorite one, Hebrews chapter 10, verse 5 through 7 teaches Jesus was given a body and blood to be an offering for sin as blameless but when you read psalm chapter 40 verse 12 where where this is found verse 12 says that that individual had iniquity that individual had sin and jesus didn't have any sin so i repeat it one more time when the new testament quotes from the old testament it only applies to those verses being quoted from and not the entire chapter 
not the verses before it or after it, only those verses which are being quoted from. And so I'll, I'll show, I have here a list. I have many more examples, but you see one, two, three. I'm only today given three. Here it'll be, uh, you can look at that, take a screenshot if you want to study on those own, on your own, but I'm going to go ahead and call that good for today. That's enough learning to show that these things are true. If it's quoted from the Old Testament, only use those uh, passages which are being quoted from. Otherwise, you run into a lot of trouble and there's a, a lot of twisting of scripture because individuals see, oh, this, for example, Isaiah 25 talks about death being swallowed up. And so individuals say Isaiah 25 is talking about the second coming of Christ. If you read Isaiah 25, death being swallowed up is equivalent is talking about Moab, the enemies of Israel being trodden underfoot, being trampled down. It's a, a removal of the oppressor, of the persecutor, of the enemy. And so when the New Testament, 1 Corinthians 15, quotes from Isaiah 25, it's not saying all of Isaiah 25 has to do with the coming of Christ. It's saying only that passage which is being quoted from, that death would be destroyed when Christ comes again. Um, that has That's not saying all of Isaiah 25 is about the coming of Christ. And so hopefully uh, in the future videos, I'll explain this further. And so again, if you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment or send me a message. And again, my name is Jacob Thornton. My email is biblesearch530 at icloud.com. And the gospel message is Jesus. Uh, he was that sacrifice, died for our sins. Through his blood, we have forgiveness. We have faith that Jesus was risen from the dead, ascended into heaven. We repent of our sins. Um, we turn away from them, acknowledge that we have sinned in God's sight. And we are baptized for the forgiveness of our sins, Acts 2.38. And when we're baptized for, meaning in order to receive the forgiveness of our sins, Acts 2.41 says we're baptized and we're added. Acts 2.47 says when we're baptized, we're added to the church. Jesus only established one church. And so I encourage you, uh, as it says here, find a church of Christ near you. Romans chapter 16.16, 16, the churches of Christ salute you. Have a nice day.